Joining us now is New York Times sports columnist William Roden and in New York, Muhammad Ali biographer Thomas Hauser, author of His Life and Times and a new book out today, Muhammad Ali, A Tribute to the Greatest. Bill, I want to start with you. Um, explain for people who may not have seen the whole course of Muhammad Ali's life, where, where do you put your finger on the greatness of Muhammad Ali? Was it boxer, civil rights, humanitarian, what? Yeah, it, you know, so, it's so, it's so, so much, John, because he covered everyone. For me, the first thing was, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I never thought I'd feel this sad. Uh, you know, I knew this was coming, and I found myself feeling a lot sadder than I thought I would. But I remember the first, I mean, I've been, this guy has been in my life since I was like 13 years old, you know, and it was, and it was through boxing. I was only, uh, black uh, kid my, I, in Harvey, Illinois, Catholic school, I was the only black guy. Leading up to everybody was just talking, oh, this trash about Ali and Ali. So I remember getting ready uh, to uh, watch the fight. My father, who was a Joe Lewis guy, which means he's also kind of a Sunday listening guy. Remember, it was, it, was, it was February. And so just before the fight went on, my dad put on his coat, he put on his overcoat, and was going to the yard. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going out to catch clay. <laughs> you know? And so, and that was the first time we found us competitively on sort of opposite ends of sort of the fence. But catch him meaning he's gonna get knocked out. Oh no, no, he thought, yeah, he thought that 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 listen was gonna knock him in the middle, so he's gonna go to the yard and catch him. <laughs> you know, that's my dad's humor. <laughs> and so, and so, but for every phase of my life, you know, when I'm 16, 17, and the war was real, as you know, I mean, I'm like, you know, this is 67, 68, the war is real. And we're thinking about what we, you know, what are we gonna do? About dress. So at every phase of my life, including now, Ali, you know, sort of was there yeah. as this. Um, Thomas, tell me about let's uh, about Muhammad Ali as a boxer. Why was he so good? Well, let me just get one thing off my chest. I was listening to Donald Trump at the top of this telecast, and it brought back a memory of a dinner I attended at the Taj Mahal, the Trump Taj Mahal, it was, as it was called then, in the mid-1990s. It was one of those dinners where Muhammad was given an award, one of these big gala events. Donald Trump was sitting at the same table as Muhammad, and at one point in the evening, Muhammad leaned over and whispered to me, he's not as big as he thinks he is. That was one of many times when Muhammad was right. Now, in terms of Muhammad and why he was great, he was arguably the greatest fighter of all time. He was a beacon of hope for oppressed people all over the world. Every time he looked in the mirror and said, I'm so pretty, what he was really saying before it became fashionable was black is beautiful. When he refused induction into the United States Army, he stood up for the proposition that unless you have a very good reason for killing people, war is wrong. That's a lesson we still haven't learned. People all over the world haven't learned it. But I think in the end, his greatest contribution might have been that there was an aura of pure goodwill and love about him. He taught us how to love. All right, we're gonna take a quick break right here, be back with more of our conversation, so stay with us.